I've been using the DJI Action 4 for a couple of months now and in this video I want to give you my five tips for best image quality in case you want to use this as a vlogging cam or as a let's say C cam to a more professional camera. I had tried the Action 3 before and was really impressed by the build quality and the features but I had problems with the sharpness. Uh, however, this new version has significant improvements and I'm really happy with this update. I'm not really using this as an action cam since I'm not doing any extreme sports. Um, I use this as an alternative to my other cameras whenever I need a very small camera or when I'm afraid that the camera might get uh, damaged or very dirty. You can just wash this under the sink. Uh, and I sometimes also mount it on my bike. Um, and I guess one time uh, I didn't mount it properly and it fell down to the street and to my surprise this was no big deal at all. Um, so this is built like a tank, uh, at least when you're using this frame as well. So anyway, great camera, here are my five tips. Tip number one, activate pro mode and record in 10-bit log. That way you will get most dynamic range and color resolution, which is important when you're doing color grading. But even only color correction works best with 10 bits. Uh, with one of the last firmware updates, uh, the camera even supports uh, 10 bit recording with a regular color profile, but Log offers you more dynamic range. But you need an additional step in post to apply this Log conversion LUT to make it look right. Also, use fixed settings for ISO and shutter speed, otherwise, your exposure might change mid shot which looks really unprofessional or at least not cinematic. Of course, this is more work and can lead to clipping when you're doing it wrong or when the lighting changes. And the camera doesn't have exposure tools like zebras, which would highlight over or underexposed areas in the image, but it shows you if the general image is over or underexposed when you're in the exposure settings. And if you connect the camera to the MIMO app, then you can see zebras and a histogram on your phone. If you do want to use some kind of auto exposure because for example you don't have time to expose manually then the Action 4 has great auto ISO modes uh, where it keeps the shutter speed at a constant value and selects the ISO between 100 and the maximum value that you can select. I normally set this to 800 because the image can look pretty noisy above that and you can even apply an exposure offset in case you want to over or underexpose the image intentionally relative to the suggested exposure. Tip number two is about shutter speed. Every filmmaker knows that you should use a 180 degree shutter angle, or in other words, that your shutter speed should be one over twice the frames per second. But forget this rule when you're using digital image stabilization like the Action Force Rock Steady. And here's the reason. The whole point of the 180 degree shutter rule is to get the right amount of motion blur. If the shutter speed is too high, then moving objects will look unnaturally sharp, and if it's too slow, then they will look too blurry. So with that rule, you hit a sweet spot. But this will only work if the camera itself is stabilized, and by that I mean physically stabilized. Um, the reason is that shakes in the footage are motion and lead to motion blur. The digital image stabilization can compensate the movement, but not the blur. So in order to get a clean and steady image with rock steady, you need to record with a minimum of motion blur. For that, I recommend setting the exposure to at least 1 over 200 or to auto and then select 1 over 200 as the minimum shutter speed. You can then add digital motion blur to the stabilized image so that only the real and wanted motion gets the smooth and blurry look. You can do that in DaVinci Resolve, for example, either in the Colors tab or in Fusion using a motion blur node. If you happen to have a gimbal for the Action 4 or a tripod, or if you have steady hands and you are able to get steady shots handheld, then you can use the 180 degree shutter rule. And by that, you will get the most natural motion blur. When you're doing that, you might even want to use ND filters if you're dealing with a lot of light. So I suggest to decide first if you need rock steady because you're moving a lot and in that case don't go under 1 over 200 as a shutter speed and 
If your shot is more or less stable, then use 1 over 50 for 24 frames per second. You can even create settings for this. So I have one setting for stable shots with 1 over 50 with no rock steady and one with rock steady and the shutter speed set to 1 over 200. Tip number three, turn off noise reduction and sharpening and do these things in post. You can find the settings under image adjustment, which you have to set to custom. I had noise reduction set to one because the image can get pretty noisy in low light, but then I found out that noise reduction works a lot better in DaVinci Resolve and I was able to retain many more details that would have looked blurry and washed out. And since the on-device noise reduction is baked into the footage, you cannot get those details back later. So set both settings to minus two and take advantage of noise reduction and sharpening in your editing software. Tip number four, get a good handle for the cam. And in this case, I would say heavier is better when it comes to stabilization because weight adds inertia to the camera and that reduces shakes. As I explained before, Rocksteady can be problematic when you want to have good motion blur and anyway, it crops into the footage. So if you don't need it, turn it off and you will get even better image quality. I got the Ulanzi handle, which can even be extended a bit. So this works pretty well for handheld shots and steady shots. Um, but regarding weight, I think that's the absolute minimum. What works even better is something like the Ronin tripod with a GoPro mount. Tip number five, use the simple sun hood instead of the glass cover. DJI includes this thing, but doesn't really talk about it in the manual for some reason. So the default cover makes the whole thing waterproof, but it's another layer of glass, which can reduce light and add flares, as you can see here. So for best image quality, use the basic sun hood, but don't forget that the camera is not waterproof anymore then, and the lens is not protected as much. If something happens to the glass cover, then you can easily replace that. But if something happens to the lens, yeah, that's not so easy to fix. These were my five tips. Let me know in the comments which one helped you most, or if you have another one to share, see you there.